legislature right now, this is the power of politics. Policy making is what you're all speaking about here. Many things can be done to undermine it, to, to undermine the process that you're all speaking about here. This, your speakers are fantastic. I, I just was, I was just astounded because every day I, I, I know less about time than before and everything more and more. It's, a, it's similar to the health care policy of Obamacare where it came in as a monster that no one knows about. And I think the teachers are doing what the, what the uh, doctors failed to do, which was stand up against the health care monsters for decades, and now doctors are under siege, teachers are. And some of the information that I have, direct messages and Facebook messages, hundreds of them, you can go on my wall and scroll down, and you will see parents and teachers, special teachers, speaking out against common core. They're in a culture, because of the education cartel, and their livelihoods, so many of them aren't gonna step out, many of them are watching it right now, uh, because they have direct messages, and here's what they do. Mr. Visconti, you're running for governor. Where do you stand on Common Core? Can you elaborate? And I don't know who it is. Okay, I'm careful away because I interact on the campaign trail with the public. There's, I believe this is so important for candidates to interact and get your feedback and post it publicly. If you're going to run, post the details of what you believe publicly. Let's not cower and hide. And so I would answer, and lo and behold, they come back. Well, I'm glad to hear that I'm a teacher. Well, how do I? And I'm using my other people's names. And this happens across the board because their teachers, not all of them, have Facebook accounts with their names. There's so much going on in that world that I've realized that they're with us as I knew in West Hartford, but they're afraid to break ranks with the establishment of the education world. But we can get this done. I'm calling on today. This is being live streamed. I tweeted it to the media, and they'll watch this. I'm, again, I'll call up to ask Governor Malloy about Metro North and transparency to get out your executive order, get your majority Democrat party, right now they're in session, and remove common core standards from our curriculum. I don't care how you do it, because with immigration, he is not enforcing the law. So he can't tell me or any of us here that under this issue, he can't do something about it. And so we can do it this year. These standards can come down. All the power is in session right now. So I, Jessica needs help. She needs support. They need money to do these seminars. I stepped as a volunteer today just in for my campaign because there's, this is grassroots because so many are afraid to get into it. And so we're here as a campaign only. Win, lose, or draw, I don't care. I win the minute I come out to serve the public and help the public on the trail during an election year. Don't, don't uh, minimize the impact that you're having here today. Democrats, and I have to say Democrats because they control the state at every level. They're watching this right now. Some are in the room, and it's not about party, but it is about party if the Democratic Party won't step to the table right now in session with the governor. And I guarantee you, within a week or less, you're going to see action on this. Well, we're going to burn the damn state to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday I received an 
email that Representative Fleischman, or Fleischman, I do not know how to pronounce his last name. Fleischman. Fleischman. From West Hartford. From West Hartford. Hey! <laughs> on the Education Committee, chair, the, chair. the Chair of Education Committee has announced that the committee will not raise any bills for the Common Core for the public hearing. On that note, hold on one second. Then we receive an email from Cecilia Buck Taylor. She is a 67th General Assembly District woman. She Mil said, in Milford. In, in Milford. In Milford. New Milford. New Milford. New Milford. New Milford. Thank you. Many have expressed concerns over the impl implementation of Common Core, particularly as it relates to teacher evaluation. On Monday, February 10th, the Education Committee raised 23 bills hearings and potential actions to the legislature. Not one of these bills addressed the issue of common core or teacher evaluation. This is exactly how we have ended up in this predicament that we face right now. Common core was adopted outside of the legislative, legislative process, which meant that too many voices were left out of the, de the debate. Cecilia urges you all to co contact the co-chair of the Education Committee and request a public hearing on Common Core. She says, I do not believe that an issue as complex as Common Core should be adopted without input from those who will affect the most, teachers, administrators, parents, and students. You can contact the co-chair, Senator Andrea Stillman, by calling her at her office, 1-800-842-1420, or you can contact the co-chair representative, Andrew Fleischman, by calling his office, area code 860-240-0429. Janet, that first number, Stillman's number you gave out, is actually the switchboard for the senators. Okay. All yeah. you have to do is ask for her office. Okay. And then leave a message. Is she in the hospital? I have no idea. She's this been sick. This yeah. just came out today, so I'm the other, the other thing people can do is if they go to Connecticut.gov, which is their website, you can look up the education committee <coughs> and call every single one of those members. But Andrew Fleischman is head of that committee. He runs it like a dictatorship. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if he doesn't want something coming out of that committee, a bill, he does it up. Okay. He, he's been he's running against him. Well, yeah. I put it up on my Facebook page and on every single Common Core page we have on Facebook yes. for Connecticut. To Every time she calls Fleischman, my husband and I, his dad says, you won't get anybody, or more than likely you'll get a, an answering machine with a date. Just leave a message. You want a public hearing on Common Core? The hearing that they're having, and I put that in quotes because it's not a hearing, is only made up of a few people that invited guests. Not good enough. The public needs to be heard. Correct. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you, Mary. <coughs> As Mary was saying, that was <laughs> they will hold an informational hearing only on February 28th at the Capitol Room. 2C at, not at 10 a.m. LOB. This is unacceptable, and our next move is to take action. So many parents and teachers, administrators have called, written, and emailed their concerns to legislation. This is only the beginning, and we will not be taken down easily. These are our children, our future. We elected them into office, and it is their duty to listen to the people who elected them into office. Parents and teachers are already emailing and contacting Fleischman, voicing their concerns. We will not stand down and we will not back down. And it is <laughs> Any information needed to contact him and other legislature will be provided on Facebook and any means possible. We will not allow them to use this pressure of Common Core as an election tool. If they 
care about our children and their education and our future, they will sit down, they will talk to us, and they will discuss coming for and get it out of Connecticut. I don't want it two years from now, three years from now. We want this out before the election. Yes! Before the end of the session. Is a law. Statute. 
for an administrative regulation. Okay. Those two things are enforceable, whether it's a federal or state statute for administrative regulation. The rest is just policy. It's what we do. It's what I think we have to do. And none of that is enforceable or law. And that's why you need to make improvements. Thank you. 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 Thank
But it is basic contract law. If they were not eligible to enter into the contract, the contract by default is null and void. Right. But the state basic one on one. Look at the statute and see what the authority of the State Department of the State Board of Education has. What was that second statute? The first statute is 10-4, Duties of the State Board of Education. The second statute, the local district, is 10-220, subsection E. And it's Marbury v. Madison? Yeah. It's called the Covenant of the Constitution of Delaware. To me, the solution is to have an attorney such as yourself, like an organization, hire you and sue, like, whoever, to be able to do this. That's one option. All I'm saying is that this has to be part of the conversation because that can be very simple. This is, you have the authority here. Your local school district has the authority to say no, period. We can bring that, we can bring this statute to the Board of Ed and say, look, this is. Absolutely. You need to educate everyone. It's important what Dr. Turner was talking about in terms of history is extremely important. They need to know about the Constitution, about the rule of law, and the rule of law matters, and it needs to be enforced. And people have to stand up and say, I want you to pay attention to the Constitution and only do that which you are authorized to do. And if you're not authorized to do it, we don't have to do it either. And if I have the authority in the local district to say no, then your local district can say no. I'm from New Hartford, and I wanted to let you know our curriculum specialist did a big presentation. Our superintendent is all going to go on this. We have already spent, our budget has increased 200% for teacher and education, professional development, all of that. So we're fighting that from a financial standpoint. We're fighting that from a financial standpoint. But after the curriculum specialist made her presentation about Common Core, we had questions about privacy. She directed me to call Abe Crist, who is the technology director for the state of Connecticut. My first question to him is, what happens with the data? His direct words to me, as God is my witness, good question. The state of Connecticut has not even hired the company to assess the testing. So they do not know the privacy policy of whatever contract they have. That was enough for me. I have opted my child out. A couple more questions. She's been standing up for a while. Go ahead. Thank you for your expert opinion. So I have a question. Are they required to tell us who to disperse through the school day? Let's say the test is not a whole day, like the CMTs or anything else. They have to tell you. Yes, they have to tell us and how far in advance we are before we got. It doesn't matter. You can ask them yesterday. They should give you that information. But are they going to tell us if you don't ask? No.
ran for the federal government, he was the legislative for the executive branch of the government. Well, I've looked through the Connecticut Constitution, specifically I think it's Article Third, which is the legislative branch. There's no enumerated power to regulate education on a state level, which means that's a power reserved to the people through their municipal governments. So even under the color of statute law, whatever two statute laws you cited, that's unconstitutional because they have no enumerated power. Well, there, there has been there has been authority on that. There's another part of the Constitution that 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 says there shall be a public school fund. So that that's part of the Constitution to set up a fund specifically for public schools. So that's number one. And then there's there's a, another home rule section, but it really it really doesn't apply. And then there's been um, uh, case law. The Supreme the Connecticut Supreme Court has um, adopted case law interpreting what the duty of the state is. And the state has an, under Horton versus Masco, under under Shepherd and O'Neill, and a bunch of other cases, the, the state has an affirmative obligation to pro, to provide the ability of children <coughs> to receive an appropriate education. But it does not compel the state to pro provide an, 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 an appropriate education. It, it, it compels them to, to be able to have the children receive it, but the parents can refuse it if the parents want it. But they can't regulate it. They can fund it, but they, they can't regulate now, it. We have, we but have. There's a difference there. Well. And I, also, I just want to add a couple other things. When they violate, when the federal or state government violates people's unalienable rights, including education, through our U.S. codes, they can find and imprison officers of the legislative, executive, judicial branch of the government should they do so. U.S. Code 18 sections 241, 242, and if they violate those unalienable rights, they also can be held liable to the agreed party under U.S. Code 42 sections, uh, is it 1384, 1383, 1385, 1386. So people can find them, and, not, and they, receive, they don't receive the funds from the government, from the people's tax funds, they receive it from the from the people, the officers who violate the country. The whole point is the people have power. They do. They do. But they could, but they could be fined in a prison, and they could, and they could be also held liable for violating a person's unlawful rights to do with those U.S. codes I just cited. Thank you. Um, go ahead. Just one more. You mentioned the statute. Last year, the SEC decided that uh, the Title Forty um, is a state statute because they brought in a mass textbook listing by the
or B, if someone from the legislature will do it for us. Senator Markley, call him up. Joe Markley. And then I have to see if we can't get that, then maybe a possible room. I had spoken to a, a representative earlier today who said that she could get us a room. It wouldn't be a formal hearing, but at least if we're in the capital, we're talking about it. So keep an eye on Facebook for that. The hearings that he's going to have should have to be open to the public. They hold them in the LLB room. And you can go in there and just carry comments. Or just, you just be very quiet. Just have your comment board stop coming for teacher shirt. It will send a huge message. That hearing that Fleischman's going to hold, I guarantee it will be on CTN. If you all are sitting in the audience and CTN captions, a whole bunch of people protesting quietly. <coughs> just have your scientists hold time, otherwise they'll throw you out. But don't get thrown out, just be there. <laughs> and if you're in the room, you don't need a room. If you're in the room, CTN and every other station is going to start to pick it up because they're going to see all of a sudden, even if it's only 20 to 50 people, these rooms are not Well, then we can show up with our t shirts and just push it quietly. send them something as simple as an email, and then you talk to them on the phone, you say, I know the Supreme Court has the right of the parent that says you determine the education of your child. If you want to opt out your kid, you will. It trumps state law. And that's what we told them. They said, okay, you're right, and we didn't hear anything else. The rest of it was figuring out logistics with your child at the school, because they are responsible for giving them an education if they're not taking the test. So that's between you and the, and the principal and the dean and such. But um, okay. as when it comes to law, you just say Supreme Court trumps it, and you can find the, the these cases uh, on United Opt Out, I think it's .org or .com, uh, where they have all the documentation about why you can opt out anywhere. Thank you. Okay. Just one quick footnote on stuff. Um, Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. Sorry.